Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for March through June. Currently, we have quite a bit of prescribed burning occurring across the Great Basin, most notably in Utah and Nevada, but also in some areas in southern Idaho. This will likely continue for the next couple of months as we will see some wetter conditions move into the Great Basin with plenty of opportunities for burning. Over the last 14 days, we've seen precipitation across the Great Basin, but the areas that have seen above normal precipitation have been over the northern half of the region, also into parts of the mountains of Utah, parts of the Sierra, and very small pockets of the south. Those areas down over southern areas of the Great Basin just saw this precipitation just over a week ago. Prior to that, we've seen very dry conditions. So over the last 30 days, you can see that that has averaged out to below normal precipitation over the southern half of the Great Basin, but still well above normal precipitation in some areas of southern and eastern Idaho, and even into a far northwest Nevada. Temperatures, looking at the image on the left, you can see have been warm, especially across Nevada, Utah, and the Arizona Strip, and well above normal in parts of Utah and eastern Nevada. We've seen near normal or cooler conditions up north as the storm track continues to be focused over the northwest, northern Rockies, and northern half of the Great Basin. Since the beginning of the water year, dated back to October 1st, you can see a very dry conditions. Again, we, we saw several months of very dry conditions over the southern portion of Nevada into Arizona and southwest Utah. So those areas are seeing the largest deficit. Otherwise, looking further north, even in areas that we've seen recently well above normal precipitation, dating back to the beginning of the water year, this still averages out to closer to normal or even just a little bit above normal in southwest Idaho. But it has averaged to just below normal in northern Nevada and really much of Utah as well and into Wyoming. Looking at our snowpack at the end of February, we are seeing a near to just above normal snowpack over the northern half of the Great Basin. Snowpack remains below normal in the Sierra and obviously well below normal in the far south down into the southwest. Looking at the drought monitor, you can see we, with these drier conditions, it's no surprise that drought continues to develop over the southern half of the Great Basin. And we are seeing extreme to severe drought over the southern half of Nevada and southwest Utah and parts of Arizona, and even some pockets of exceptional drought. Further north, a drought has developed in parts of Idaho and Wyoming, and there is even some severe to extreme drought in western Wyoming. We do expect some improvements over the next couple of months as the storm track does remain further north. However, we have really no drought that has developed in most of northern Nevada and into southern and southwest Idaho. Looking at the drought outlook, you can see this: the drought will likely remain over the southern areas of the Great Basin, even though we will start to get some moisture. Probably won't make much of a difference in the far south. And looking our, at our evaporative demand drought index, more the short-term drought changes, and you can see how, again, significantly the drought continues to intensify over the southern areas. You can see up north, even though we do have some areas of longer-term drought, uh, the areas in blue indicate that those drought conditions have been improving somewhat. So looking at our fire seasons and how they correlate to drought, this is the drought time series dating back to the year 2000. And you can see the periods of significant drought in the darker reds. And then obviously the periods in between are much shorter where we either don't have any drought or we have less severe drought. But the black boxes indicate that those are the times in between these areas of significant drought that we do see above normal or above median fire seasons across the lower elevations of the Great Basin. We have more grass growth, a more fine fuel loading to really carry the fires. So we tend to see larger acreage burn. However, that's just in the lower elevations. Uh, looking at the higher elevations, it's really when we're in these areas of more exceptional drought that we do see more problems at the higher, mid and higher elevations. And so looking at where conditions are right now, you can see obviously we had a year or two where we had very little drought um, after some really good precipitation after our last uh, more significant period of drought. However, we are seeing that return again, especially over the southern half of the Great Basin. So we will be looking at some of these areas where drought is returning, where we do have some concerns in the higher elevations, but also uh, do have concerns in the lower elevations where we do have above normal fine fuel growth in many areas that did not see fires uh, come through there last year. So looking at our fuel conditions, this is our fine fuel loading experimental product from last year. So going into last fire season, this is where we had obviously the, the growth and the carryover last year. So we'll be looking at some of these areas for carryover going into this year. So looking at the image on the left, this is the estimated standing dead fine fuel 
plus the that came into 2024 plus the new growth in the spring of 2024. You can see some of the green areas indicating above normal condition or at least that higher fuel loading. We're in areas of far northern Nevada, southern Idaho, and even little pockets of Utah, but for the most part that was really where our fine fuel loading was. And then looking at the image on the right showing our invasive species cheatgrass coverage. This does not correlate to loading. Again, it's just coverage, so a lot of continuity in many of these areas where we did see that heavier loading. So a lot of these areas in northern Nevada and even parts of southern Idaho did not see or have not seen snowfall on the ground long enough to really have significant compaction. So we will be watching that here over the next couple of months because we are moving into a wetter period. So we'll be monitoring uh, those conditions to see how much carryover we expect going into this year. So looking at some current fuel moistures, our 10 hour fuel moisture, definitely higher over the northern half of the Great Basin where storms have been more active and drier in the south. And we're seeing that similar trend in 100 hour and 1000 hour fuels as well. But despite being on the lower side in the southern areas of the Great Basin, and even if we are technically below normal in some of those areas, we are still well outside of those critical values um, at this time in the year. So looking at a couple of our 100 hour fuel moisture or ERC charts, uh, you can definitely see um, these are looking at ERC in Southeast Utah. This is where we are seeing ERCs well above normal and even near historical maximums for the time of year. But obviously you can see still well below those critical percentiles. Um, so again, very dry for the time of year, um, but not uh, still not showing very high fire danger. Similar conditions over Western Nevada, not quite as high, kind of closer to normal. And then really all areas over the northern half of the Great Basin, ERCs are generally near or below normal. So looking at what is going to happen here in the future, you can see here is the forecast for seven day total precipitation. So we are moving into a wetter period after being very warm and dry here over the last week or so across much of the Great Basin. And you can see from this projection, most areas of the Great Basin over the next seven days, we'll see at least some light precipitation, definitely some heavier amounts in the Sierra, parts of Nevada and Utah, and even up into central Idaho. Some drier pockets or areas that we'll see not quite as much overall precipitation will be the far south and also southeast Utah. However, looking at the next two weeks, we are still expecting this pattern to continue. So we are expecting below normal temperatures and above normal precipitation for much of the Great Basin. Obviously, it's a little bit heavier near the California coast as these systems move in. And this is a model prediction of the possible precipitation forecast through the middle of March. So over the next two weeks, you can really see all areas get at least some precipitation, but some areas on the lighter side still southern Nevada, southeast Utah, and even parts of some of the lower terrain of southern Idaho. But still good precipitation, cooler temperatures, and higher humidity, which is not what we've been seeing recently. So looking at the next couple of months as far as the outlook, so temperatures in the top row, you can see obviously that cooler wetter period in March that we have been looking at for the last couple of months and does look like it will be coming to fruition. This may linger into April, so we'll be watching how long this wetter pattern actually stays around because that will definitely give us some indications going into May and June, how long those fuels will take to dry out and what our, some of our fire danger and fire potential might look like. But right now it looks like it still could be heading into at least the first part of April for above normal precipitation potentially, especially over the western half of the Great Basin and in the north. And then as we move into May and June, we're really seeing more of a drier signature across the Great Basin with warm temperatures. So we will see those fuels probably go through the curing schedule either on schedule or maybe even slightly ahead of schedule depending on the area. Um, but right now we will be watching some of these areas over the southern half of the Great Basin, especially as we get into later in May and June, as those areas have the most significant drought and also have had obviously the least amount of precipitation and least amount of snowpack. So some of those mid and high elevations in southern areas will be concerning. Looking at June for the southwest, we are seeing some signatures that show above normal precipitation potentially in Arizona. This could be an early onset of the monsoon. So that will also be something we'll be watching heading towards that period to see if it starts to move into the Great Basin or if we just have a little bit more potential of some drier lightning, which right now is looking like the case for June. So putting everything together, our outlook from March through May, we are expecting normal conditions, especially during March and April with the wetter conditions moving in. So should see continued prescribed burning, still low fire danger and low overall potential for wildfires. 
Uh, but really that May time period is really where things may start to change. We are indicating normal for now, but we will watch that the weather pattern here over the next several weeks and look at southern areas to see if we need to add any above normal fire potential by the latter half of May. So right now we're holding off until June where we do have some above normal fire potential in the Spring Mountains in Southern Nevada and also into parts of the higher elevations of Southern and Southeast Utah over towards the Abajos and the Grand Staircase, parts of the Arizona Strip. So again, mainly looking at the mid and higher elevations that will have most likely a deficit for snowpack and precipitation with the drought that will also exacerbate some of that increased fire potential. We are not expecting a really much in the way of fine fuel issues in the South, at least probably not much different than what was there last year with the drought and the drier conditions, and most likely not much additional growth uh, heading into the lower elevations. So that concludes our webcast for this month. Check back next month for the latest updates.